Hey everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today I have Nate Rossa with me. He has a podcast called I Just Can't Even With Myself and it's like Pure Any Unleashed. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to see what any looks like, definitely check out his podcast. It's really great stuff. And he has a lot of things lined up as well. Uh, he, he's a jack of all trades and he makes his own um, music at the beginning of his podcast and he, I don't know he, he knows a little bit of everything he knows like how to program I don't even know why you know how to program <laughs> but you know how, all of this jack of all trades stuff because I, I just had to it's one of those situations where it's a survival thing it's either like you pay bun you throw some money down to somebody else who's gonna do it for you or do it yourself because you don't have the money <laughs> so <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, I, I'm going through the exact same type of thing. Then, <laughs> right? like, if I had, if I had the money, I feel like I could, you know, sp spend it on getting some people, like you know, getting an editor or like getting somebody who knows better than I do, because I do feel that a lot of people know better than me. Um, but at the moment, since I don't have that yet, I'll just play with it until I get that, you know, get that vision out of my head and then see where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah. And I think there's an element of any that plays with things. It's just like, I just want to tinker, play, or like, I don't know, the possibilities out of things. <laughs> Definitely. I, I do tend to look at the world as if it's just me exploring it. Like, I just have to explore everything. Um, I've always found myself to be in situations where I'll end up getting into bad situations because I need to go there. Like, I need to learn it via that way um i kind of described it in the video that i made uh before like way back where i called it um kinesthetic learning but for your mind like i know you know how sd tends to be kinesthetic learning for your body how yeah. they have to explore via the body they yeah. have to put themselves out there and make it happen for yeah. me it's it's mind wise conceptually i have to put myself out there so if there were a concept let's say like a completely different concept that's totally out of out of left field for me I'm going to believe it for a moment and put my NE there to see what it's like. And then, because I can't just, you know, look at it from that kind of outside view, I actually have to really go into it. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's like mental gymnastics. While like SE is like the actual physical gymnastics, yours is like an, an ideational gymnastics. <laughs> In a way, yeah, which is, it has its pros and its cons. Cause you know how with mental gymnastics, people be reaching. Like I know you've seen like, there's a lot of NE users reaching <laughs> trying to get this point and you're going eh, that's probably not the main point that they were trying to talk about but thanks for going there i guess <laughs> <laughs> one of those one of those gigs totally yeah it's so true yeah yeah like extroverted intuition just kind of like likes to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what happens it's like oh, if i throw spaghetti right. yep <laughs> And it's, it's it, even if we might know what would happen, like even if we've already done like the whole thing about, oh, well, you know, you throw anything at a wall that's made of food, it might stick. But then we're just like, but we just have to do it. <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> also, I hope you don't mind just me drinking constantly. This is just sure, <laughs> definitely stay hydrated. Notice how I'm like switching. I went from coffee to water. <laughs> and it's just, oh man. Yes, definitely. You're, you're just, wow, drink, drinking all of that. <laughs> uh, but, it's, yeah. Yeah, with, you mentioned before that, like, any is like, um, the SD user will go like, talks like a duck, acts like a duck, it is a duck. So extroverted sensing is like, it is what it is. Yes. Well, it, well extroverted intuition, you said Nate before, was like, talks like a duck, walks like a duck, it might be a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad because it's so true. <laughs> like there's it's never ever about the object. Like yes, we you know young in terms like I'm looking at the object, but I'm always moving up, away from it. Like I'm never like it's always going to be a matter of I see the mic, but also I don't see the mic because I feel like I'm going to go beyond that mic and then go into something that's not even the mic at all and we're like what were we even talking about? Like it's just always that zone of exploration that you know, SE could just be like, dude, it's just a mic, you know, <laughs> like, it's just, it's a black ball in front of you, make it happen. And I'm going, yes, but at that point, I'm not even interested in it, in it anymore. I'm moving on to something else that started with the mic. So yeah, it's, just... it's like you're interested in the possibilities that the mic generates, but not like the mic itself. <laughs> exactly. I'm just going farther and farther away from reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have ejected from planet Earth, just heading out. Now. Exactly, exactly. It's, like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, like there's a multiverse element to any because it's like 
you get farther from reality and it, it like you you it, you create like this multiverse dimension of possibilities mm -hmm. it's crazy because um i mean granted i'm on any dom so in a way it, because it's my realm it's my air that i breathe it's in a way like i'm kind of used to it at this point that my brain will just automatically just start taking me somewhere without me even noticing it. Like, I'll just be, I think that's why I can never be bored in a way, because I'll just be sitting there and then people be like, are you okay? Like, do you need, you know, like, do you need water? Do you need like to be comfortable? And I'm just sitting in their place or in their apartment. And I'm just like, no, no, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. And then they ask me, then when they finally ask me, they're like, where are you? And I'm going, oh, well, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Like, I've just been, you know, I'm already carooning some kind of like, story about this like group of people over here i'm like working out something over there in my mind i'm like trying to fix this relationship between two fictional characters like it's just it's all over the place in a way i am preoccupied because of it that's but, so interesting yeah like perceivers are known for being multitaskers and it seems like you multitask with ideas or, and things like i don't know always. you have this like the the all the projects that you're multitasking with and it has like a very perceivery feel to it <laughs> oh it really is and it's yeah. that multitasky thing is is kind of a double edged sword for me because in a way i need it to to be productive i don't know how cuz like i've noticed that in other situations where it requires me to be focused let's say like i have to buckle down because i got something to do to do tonight that's like re requires some kind of you know, hyper focus, some kind of study thing. And my study habits are all over the place. But I don't have, I don't think I even have good study habits that I can say that I do. It's very, I'm writing this. And the next thing you know, I'm going, oh no, I just had an idea about this story in another file. So I'll move on to the next file and like get it out. Because if I don't do that, I'm just going to be so distracted with that idea because I don't want it to go away that I can't even focus on the main point that I'm doing anymore. So it's almost like I have to constantly be filing, like always trying to find ways to filter and make all these ideas flow out in a way. Um, the best way I could use it is a, another good example that I could say for this is, for example, when I drive, I don't never have music on because when I'm driving and there's no music and it's just me in silence, I start getting anxiety or I start getting anxious because I start imagining all the possibilities on the road. With the music, it gives a way for my Annie to be distracted so that I can focus on the road. I don't know how, if that's kind of the same thing with me when it comes to studying also. I need to like put it away, find ways to throw these ideas into certain boxes or else I'm just gonna like lose it. <laughs> He, yeah, that's so interesting. I think that might be one of the differences between an I and any, because you say that, like, you get distracted by ideas. For me, and it makes it hard, like, you said that it makes it hard for you to focus on a main point, whereas for me, I use introverted intuition, so I find it too easy to focus on the main idea. Uh, and everything, everything, like, every distraction relates back to a main idea. Like, it's very focused, like, it is, like, this like my thoughts all have a certain trajectory to them. That's so great. I'm like, actually, I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> like, please more of that. Like, just <laughs> no, but yours is great. Like your creativity powerhouse. Uh, you know, I, I work with it for what it is. I was telling Megan this, that I kind of never really want to wish this on anybody else. Like, I'm glad that in a way I'm used to it like you think of it like a poison like you're you're happy that at least you've survived it but you don't really want to give it to anybody else because <laughs> like, you don't know what they're gonna do with it like the minute they take it for a second they're going ah and then they just <laughs> lose it <laughs> because it, it's not I, I don't mean to super exaggerate about the phenomenon of being an NE dom but I don't know if other NE doms will be able to relate to that but it's just imagine if somebody who isn't an NE dom like let's say somebody like an ISTJ or an ISFJ where, you know, they can see it, they can understand, they can probably appreciate any having it in their stack. But when it hits them, it's, it hits them. You know? it's, not the, it's not the nice way that we won't, they won't ride with the wave as much as we would. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's scary in a way. And I'm, I see, because with parents who are, and I'm looking at them and I see them go through the panic. And I'm going like, dang, if you had what is going on in my mind, like as your, you know, as an ISTJ, like, I don't think you'd, you'd like that like at all <laughs> that would be pretty insane <laughs> yeah it, it's it's like a hyperdrive or something with with like all of this idea swarming around 
Oh, maybe? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you said, like, I, I think one time you said, like, one point can, like, lead to, like, m so many ideas. It's, like, it's an explosion. Like, like, the, like, the SI point is, like, this, what, what do you call, like, when, I'm blanking out, like, you know, when the, when the world started, and I, I don't oh, know. Like, like, a big bang situation? Yeah, like, it's, like, yeah. a big bang of ideas. Like, an expansion, um, yeah. An expansion. Um, I like to call it a divergence of thought, always and described NI as the convergence of thought because we're kind of operating on different kinds of motion. Yeah, because, yeah. Because, you know, you mentioned being trajectorial, tra trajectorial, <laughs> if that's a word, <laughs> of, of ideas where they're all kind of going into one line all the time, which yes. I am so jealous of because that is something I can only imagine and pretend to do. Because um, I naturally always go this way, right? I'm always going expansion. So it's it's really hard to kind of sit still sometimes with ideas and, you know, and not be able to weigh these possibilities. Cause it's like, it, I mean, part of it is being fun also. Wait, I don't know if you heard that. I was, I was doing laundry earlier. So I just... <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of your multiple things just set off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, your many things. Many things. Oh, many yeah. things. It, yeah, you mentioned this cool idea about NA before. Um, you talked about on Megan's channel about the like NI, like introverted intuition is more like cyclical in perception. Oh, whereas yeah. you said that um, introverted intuition, I mean, sorry. Yeah, no, wait. Extroverted intuition, any is more linear. And I, I thought maybe that would be cool to expand on. Definitely. It's not linear in a way that people assume that it's that I'm talking about a line. Like, I like to talk, talk about it as a horizon is a better way to put it. Because, yes, we expand, but we are always expanding, like, outwards. But imagine, let's say, the best way I could, ima I could put, and put this out is, imagine a flat land. Now imagine a river going through it. Now imagine that river branching out. The river isn't flying all over the place. It's literally on a flat land. You know, maybe you could call it a slope, but it doesn't really do anything else. It's just straight right? It's just a, a flat place. Now, that's kind of how I see any in a way. I don't really see us, us any users kind of going all over the place um, in the same way that NI could. Because I feel like NI, it's a completely different metaphor. It's a completely different concept, different place. Because um, you know how we like, a lot of Jungian people like to compare the two a lot of the times, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's NI is the opposite of any. And to some extent, I'll agree with it. But when I've learned from observation with, with folks, um, we're almost, it's not that we're opposite, it's that we're very different. We're just very distinct in our own way. So it, it, because NI is tied to SE and NE is tied to SI, they're basically two different, completely different styles of taking in, gathering information and then processing it. So in a way, I can't really say that these could be opposites because they're completely operating. Like let's say even different styles, different philosophies, different schools of thought are coming, are being born from these mentalities or these patterns that we have. Now going into cyclical, I say, I called it cyclical because in a way, what I didn't say with NE, with the straight line thing, I could see with NI. Um, NI is always often taking into consideration eras, you know, history from the past. Like I would say not maybe history from the past, but I'm sorry, the word is what I'm looking for is like application of the beginning of, from the beginning of time till now. And there's always, you know, and in a way, it's easier to track NI because when you hear an NI person talk about it, they're always like, well, we've done this before. Like, this isn't new, right? Like, this has been done, like, this has this pattern, this archetype of society has already been played out before. So this isn't new. And so I kind of see it as kind of a, you know, up and down circle almost. That's why in a way I see NI people can reason out and say things like, well, it's not going to end because they know that it's gonna come back. You know, whereas like an SI user, let's such as myself would be like, oh, well, I don't know what's going on. You know, like we're very, could, we could still be confused about it. But then for you guys, because you know, there's no surprises in the world, um, that it's easier to have that kind of mentality. You know, like there's people out there who'd be like, well, learn from your history then, right? Like they're always like, NI users is always, excuse me, but like thinking really outside the box because they notice the pattern and they're kind of bored with it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I'm not impressed by what's going on in society. Therefore, I will think of something else outside of society. So my conclusions from this kind of thing that I'm going off of is that 
NI is the more creative of, of the two in that sense? I think they might be creative in different ways. Again, like, back to the different way thing. Yeah, yeah like with Nate, uh, I see you as a very creative person. Um, There's this one time on Twitter, you're like, give me three objects and I'll create <laughs> an entire story out of it. <laughs> That is a form of creativity. And the thing is, what's creative about extroverted intuition is that it'll take like all these remixes of everything and then they'll it'll mutate it. Like I think that like what I call extroverted intuition is like this masterful mutation of putting things together um, into something that's novel and not before seen because you have a talent for mutation. I know it sounds bad, but it's actually good. <laughs> yeah, in a way, like, I, I can see that. It's almost giving me, like, alchemical vibes, almost, too, because we're always trying to pull ideas and meshing them together, yeah. in a way, and, like, always trying to find the connection between one to the other, yeah. uh, even if there are no obvious SE connections between one object and another. I think I've confused some people, too, where I compare two things, and they're always going, well, I don't see the comparison. I don't see what you're trying to talk about. And I'm going, oh, I meant conceptually. They could be the same. And <laughs> they still don't pick it up because they're like, that doesn't make sense. And I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's just my any mind then. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, it's funny too, because I, I would like to add to that. I think a lot of any users I've come across or encountered, I call them alchemists by, well, by default because of what, they te what we tend to do by merging and blending systems together and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. It's actually kind of hilarious when you really think about it because of how crazy that might be. Um, there's, I think all the times I've talked to people who, or at least heard of their theories, it's often always an end user blending something with something else and making a conclusion out of it. <laughs> who knows if it's real or not though? Who knows if it's true or not? It's not really, that's not really the point. I guess the point with us as any is that we were having fun exploring that, you know, possible conclusion, even if it, it's yeah. <laughs> like it, it's like you when you guys tell me conclusions, I think it's really compelling. And like because I'm NI, right? So how mm -hmm. I see it, it's like if I didn't know about typology, I'd be like, wow, you spent a lot of time thinking about that conclusion. I'm like, you must have been very thorough, and it must like you must have looked at all the sides and made sure it was complete. I must consider it because mm -hmm. you might have a really good point. And then I realized that the any user is just like, I just said that out of the top of my head. Joyce. Yeah, just like, that's just now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's insane. I think it's, it's actually even more insane for anybody who, who thinks about this, and probably it's controversial of me to even say, but I kind of do think that we, a lot of any users are talking out of their ass a lot. Yeah. We just, you know, we just are good at pretending and sound, trying to sound smart when really we don't know anything about an a subject. Um, a good example was uh, this one guy I was with. I think he was an, I don't know, actually I don't even know his type. Uh, he thought that I knew a lot about cars because he would bring up his luck because he had a passion for cars. So he'd be all this stuff. And then I would just offer little terms that like I've, you know, that I picked up on. He's like, wow, you know a lot about cars. And I'm going, no, I don't. I literally, what ended up, what was actually the truth is that an hour before I met him, I was reading a children's book about cars. <laughs> and it was telling me about little parts of it. Like things like suspension, pork, you know, <laughs> things like the spring or the engine and like all that kind of stuff. And so I was bringing all these things out and making conclusions out of it. And the guy literally thought that I knew so much about cars because I had, I was following his train of thought. And I'm going, don't, yeah, I was like, I gave him a huge disclaimer after he told me that. I'm like, nope, don't buy whatever I'm saying because I'm literally just saying it to fill in what you're telling me. I'm just, we're just reacting to each other. It has nothing to do with my actual intelligence. Yeah, it'll like, like, any is really good at quickly inferring the holes and then putting things in it to make it. Yeah, make it. it's yeah. just assumptions. I'm going, I gave him the thought. I'm like, I'm just assuming if I'm right, that just so happened to be right. It isn't something like, oh, I know I'm right or something. I'm like, no, I really don't. I've, we're just playing it here. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a really good example of the N and I any interaction in this video, and I wanted to point it out. Mm -hmm. um, when when I was mentioning that idea about um, how as an NI user, because I'm so serious about my own ideation and I, it's so personal to me, I assume that and I project that onto other people. And then yes. I was expecting you to 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 get my bait and to continue on fleshing a convergent 
train of thought. But what no. you did is you went expansive. You you went like, oh yeah, yeah this reminds me of this. And then like, <laughs> I immediately like, I was like, but I didn't finish my convergent thought yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is no it's exactly that's exactly correct i because in a way i'm unable to in a way if that makes sense like in 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 a certain aspect uh i would have to be like if i were to follow with you your and i thought you may have to hold my cons- metaphorical hand right and like take me through it because i wouldn't um i would just automatically just start pulling things again from everywhere else and it's a default like as we're both dominant in perceivers right or dominant intuitive perceivers like we're just ugh, i i can't help it it's really going to be one of those things i will try <laughs> we'll get there i hope <laughs> oh i feel like when when any is able to follow the ni train of thought like they, they do appreciate it they're like wow uh, or like I, I feel like there's beautiful things about extroverted intuition um in the sense that what you're saying is actually really brilliant um, when you connect a seemingly unrelated idea to another seemingly unrelated idea and finding that, like, that similarity, you astound people because no one else has that ability to do that. In a way, yeah, like, I agree. I agree with that, actually. Um, it's so uncomfortable for me to even, like, get out, get that mentality, though. At the same time, my SI kicked in where I was just like, oh, nobody else thinks like me. Ooh, it's a weird feeling. Uh, even though growing up, it was definitely something that I knew, like I knew it in, like instinctively, I knew that I didn't think like other people because everybody just looked at me weird and they're like, why are you, why are you make, how are you coming up with this stuff? <laughs> it's always, um, yeah, it's just uh, the connections that I create, it's, I feel like, well, on my end, I feel like people put a little bit too much um, love to ne not enough love for ni if that makes sense because because ni is in the way is hidden like you can see me in real time giving you your ne right like it's all over this all over the place um but ni is a lot more hidden like it's it's not like you that's why in a way you have to tell me because i wouldn't know if you know because it, it's literally just you taking it in <laughs> i'm just going like okay yeah but I feel like that's why like, they make good friends. For example, this, here's my th- side theory. You know, mm-hmm. Carl Jung, he, he, the, people call him an NI user. And mm-hmm. like the only person who, the only people who were able to decode what he said into a way that was like, accessible to everyone were, were people who identified as like NFPs. And I feel mm-hmm. like, like extroverted intuition is like that key to, to, to disseminating what NI is saying. Because like, for, for example, like, I'll say something that is like a pattern, but I won't be able to explain it in a way that is concreteable. And, but what any does is like when it describes to other people, my thoughts, it like people get it. And it's like, well, now if I just pass all my thoughts through Nate, then <laughs> Nate can describe it. And I'll just I, translate. <laughs> <laughs> you are my translator. That's my, my, um, like aluminum hat theory that I have, my conspiracy theory. <laughs> In a way, I can see that because uh, I think of all the NI people that I've been talking to and communicating with, in a way, it's the phenomenon is happening like that. Like that it's been consistent with what's my own experience. Yeah, least. yeah. Like if I were to think about, you know, your podcast and, yeah. you know, Cat Passionate, she told you like you understood her, like, like, and it like it, it made her like, really feel appreciated and I feel like that that's what any users make me feel like when they start to describe me as a person like like if if you were Nate to tell me my own traits or you were to 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 talk about my cognition or anything about me like I feel like I just not understood in general but Mm -hmm. when any user describes me I feel like they actually like got some like they got like they got the gist correct and I'm like I've never felt that in my life before oh hmm. <laughs> but it's also consistent with my own experiences because I, I I mean I know I got I, I lately I haven't been giving as much compliments to people but for and I have definitely tried to fit in as much as I can like there's this another INFJ I've been talking to recently and like I would just say things like you know I really appreciate how your mind works because in a way it's 
it's sustainable. It's literally sustainable intuition. And I, I've never seen somebody, because I work in bursts, it's so hard for me to even emulate that. So, and people don't even acknowledge it because like how useful is a sustainable intuition? But the thing is, it's because they're not seeing, well, they want to see the result. And I've always had this philosophy in my mind now, lately too, that we cannot have a, a mentality of just result oriented because we'll never get what we want then. Right? We need to look at it from a larger perspective. We need to look at it from a longer perspective. Because in a way, our solution can't be tomorrow, even if we want to. Even if we want to, time and time again, it's told us that it's not. <laughs> so we have to be better than that. And NI is a pretty good solution. Like if you were going to apply NI principles, like it's a good use, in my opinion, uh, of getting there. Because like people always say, like, oh, well, I have goals, but I've never really reached them. And I'm going, okay, well, what are you doing wrong? Like, what are you missing? And I always find out they're missing the NI because they're always like, well, I want to do this. And then they just burst it and they burn out and they never make it happen. Whereas I've noticed with INFJs, INTJs, it's the chugging along cons consistently. Like every day is a part of the future in a way. Every day is a part of the, the concept. So they don't look at it from separated chunks, even if they probably, that's how it is expressed, you know, via TE or FE. Maybe, it, you know, they do operate a daily at some point. Like, I've definitely noticed you guys do that. So but, do, you, do you view it as separated chunks? Um, I do, because in a way, my problem as an any dom is that every day is new. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, in, it's not connected, what are you talking about? Um, also, I'm a huge believer of coincidence. So that's my, like, my school of thought that puts me at a disadvantage sometimes because if I view everything as a coincidence, or not, well, I'm exaggerating of, or using hyperbole, but because obviously not everything is coincident, but point being, if I view everything as a coincidence, then I will not be able to track the patterns because everything will then be new and everything will then be a separate instance. Whereas for NI, nothing is a coincidence. Everything has a reason why it became that way. So that's where you guys are focused on. So in a way, that's why you guys can't help but see patterns and results and conclusions. So it's funny to me because people label you guys as like prophets or like fortune tellers because you guys can see I'm like it's not fortune telling like I don't know sometimes I try to I struggle with explaining it to other people who don't value NI I'm like it's not fortune telling it's like selective foresight that's really good <laughs> like it, yes it's really good like it, yes. it's very it's on point it's it's accurate only because you know like let's say like I don't know how the best way I could describe it is if you're quiet then you are thinking. And if you are thinking about intuition, <laughs> you're likely to come up with a very, very concise conclusion. <laughs> if you're distracted like I am, as in any user constantly being like, you know, jewelry, you know, all kinds of stuff, sparkly things, I'll never come to that conclusion because it's always something in my face. But for you guys, it's like, let's go past that. Let's keep going through that, past it. Let's keep going, zooming out, 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 and seeing all of that kick in at once. And I'm like, wow. In a way, that's why I'm like impressed by it because of how it is. Yeah, that's so cool. Like how you mentioned separated chunks. Like for for me, I, I never view anything as a separate entity on itself. I like I mentally cannot actually. And it's kind of like I see everything as blended into each other. So it's kind of like how your intuition, your your NE is blended into each other. My SE, like how I see physical events, is all blended into each other. So it, it's funny because your NI is almost already connecting everything. It's already like it, it's almost as if the conclusion is everything is connected. Whereas for me, I have to consciously connect it with any. Like to me, it's an action. To you, it's a, a fact based uh, in a way. Like, I can see you guys kind of walk in, something falls, and you already kind of have this connection in mind. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I could connect this with this. Like, it's a conscious action for me. I, I actively use metaphors to do that kind of action. But with you guys, it, it's not like that because it's already connected. You know, like, it's, it is yeah. already part of it. It's already yeah. part of the big whole gig we call life. So yeah. I'm going, huh. <laughs> very again very different styles like this is why we differ on philosophies even and it's really fascinating yeah that's so cool um i wanted to talk a little bit more about the blended metaphysical so we talked about like how any likes to mutate blend transform ideas together so yeah. in a sense you blend the metaphysical but for for se like people who use extroverted sensation on the other hand they blend the the concrete 
reality. So what they the, do is the they don't tangible. Take, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they blend mm -hmm. what's tangible. Like they're going like, this is all, you know, just tangible stuff. I'm blending it together. I don't see it as a, like, we don't have SI, so we don't specifically like capture and save a part of it, but we just see it as an entirely blended physical environment. So, and what this causes is that because of this, we, we, we try to find an I, and I main main ideas or main umbrellas main mm -hmm. themes from the blended physical because we we don't differentiate the physical like we just take in all of the physical so it's blended and it's in mm -hmm. undifferentiated so we use main ideas and how does how to siphon it and and to it's yeah it's always a, there's always a mission it. it's so cool there's always a point of reference to go to <laughs> <laughs> it's so fascinating um and it's very different from from me like definitely from from my perspective on it as an ne it, it i don't i can only imagine what that's like like i have to visualize it using things i've learned and picked up over time like remember when i talk about river stuff and talked about you know reverse ripples and stuff it's because you know, in my history, my personal history as an SI person, I've already done those things. So I'm only rehashing and recycling those things, experiences I've had, connecting them to my NE. And in a way, trying to emulate in my mind, like, how the heck do you translate, <laughs> right, an NI process? <laughs> like, it's just, it's really cool. Um, and I mean, it's, it's why it's very hard to follow along in a way. Um, yeah, I think I think there's, but I can also appreciate it deeply, especially when all the parts start to flow together. Like when you have um, a big example I would use is it's like when a a book ties everything together near the end, and then you're like, wow, like all the clues were there. <laughs> it's just it, it's there. I don't know. It's it's really really cool. It's really impressive. One hundred percent. Well, you're so <laughs> like you're so sweet about NI. <laughs> um, so uh, something about extroverted intuition that I really appreciate about you, Nate, is that like you'll have t random Twitter threads about like, hey, if you want to know your avatar, like Earth, Fire, Water <laughs> sign, just message me and I'll write an entire story about who you are under this fraction of the sign. And like the thing is, the the creative power of NE is that you're able to take like anything and then expand on it. Like, <laughs> but the thing is like you expand on it in an, like a strangely specific way. It's like you fill in the, the SI details in your story and it's like you have like this expansion, but it has all of these like <laughs> SI points of reference. And I'm like, why is it so strangely specific? <laughs> <laughs> um. Can I tell you a little bit of a secret? Like, it, I'll tell you two secrets about okay. this. So the first one is that every time I make these random threads about like, give me, a, like, I'll make you a premise, give me three objects, or I'll tell you your avatar element, or like, I'll tell you what animal or what vibe you're giving me. I just woke up and I need to <laughs> wake <laughs> up. And I've noticed with my experiences that I cannot wake up properly. Like even, like I know I drink coffee as part of my routine, but it doesn't actually affect me energy wise, especially in the morning. What affects me, the most potent way to affect me is a mental thing. So I would go onto Twitter and if I'm feeling really tired that day and I really need to like, you know what, I need to charge up. I need to something to zap me. I will make a thread like that. <laughs> and then I'll just start putting my any, it'll start flowing out of me and flowing and grabbing into everything. And it's, it literally wakes me up like that's how I, I can get out of the, the bed sometimes it's one of those um things where I'll just oh I'm like oh somebody asked for what element they are I'm like oh well there we go my mind can start working because if my mind if I have to wait for it to wind up I'm not gonna get out of bed like, that's just, you're energized by that <laughs> I, I am I am it's you, you know how it would make me feel if I did that I, I'd be like, okay, then I have to like capture this exactly. And oh. like, if I if you were if I were to do that, I'd be so like meticulous, and I'd be like, okay, three items. Okay, so how do I narrow this down and to make this like it, it is taxing for me to expand. Oh. It it like it makes me cry inside me. Oh well, that's that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, 
Oh gosh, it's yeah. Like I have to. I need to be entered. Like it's it's what I use to survive. Sometimes, like I feel like if I were, let's say, if I were to find somebody to be my partner for life, I need. If I wake up and I'm still tired, like hit me with a with a subject. That's what you have to do to wake me up. Be like, oh, good morning. I'm like, I'm still sleepy. It's like, okay, well, what's your opinion on this problem? And I'll just be like, like I'll I'll be awake. Like I'll it'll literally zap me up. And it's not something. Um, my parents can't do that. Like they they don't give me that kind of stimulation, like mental stimulation. Um, not that I blame them for it, but in a way, it's what I seek. And I think that's why I like immediately go to Twitter and like do prompts right away or go to Facebook and then do prompts because it's what I do to maintain my sanity. <laughs> it, this is like a Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Like ENFPs have a slightly different one where the, you know, the base of it is actually like needs to ideate often. <laughs> yeah, we have to. I mean, I've been locked in. I wouldn't say locked. I feel like I'm not I sound like a trapped person. But let's say, yeah, let's go with it. I've been locked in this place for like 20 years now. I'm like, I got to figure out a way to survive. <laughs> you know, like we're just, we, I know we're always like, I'm super envious of ENFPs who kind of go out and travel because they get to ideate in motion. Like, you know, harmonize their SE in the process. I don't have that luxury let's say i like to call it a luxury i'd love to um but because of my circumstances it just that's not the case so in a way i turned my focus on imagination you know turned my focus on writing stories doing all this stuff getting my head out there uh writing books producing content or whatever just so that i can wake up and actually have the energy to do other stuff because sometimes i won't be able to have that energy to do my chores even if i'm not like sometimes i do chores listening to a podcast of I was listening there's this one time I got super energized because this person was talking about their breakup with this person the wisdom they learned and I was like vacuuming I'm like super happy <laughs> I was like yes you teach me your ways and I don't even realize I've already cleaned the house you know, that kind of thing yeah wow that's how you make mate productive just feed him ideas yeah like I, I liked how like one time you're like you're hungry, but like for good ideas, like I don't know. always, always consuming. I like to think of my brain as empty. Um, that's kind of how I go about my life. I like to think of it as a very empty expanse of a vacuum that is. Oh, my Google just turned on. <laughs> it's kind of like whoa! I don't know what happened. Um, your guest, guest. That was weird. I'm like, what? Anyways, uh, yeah, no, I have, I have this. I feel like I have a vacuum and then like I'll just waiting for ideas to just come seeping in because I or not even I can't wait for those ideas I have to like act like think of it like a hungry monster like I basically just like yeah I, you're like hunting for ideas oh yeah yeah if I can't if I can't just get it on my plate I'm going to have to hunt for it I'm going to have to be aggressive and grab grab it somewhere <laughs> yeah 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 that's cool like okay so with introverted intuition on my part is that it, for me, it kind of feels like I don't, I don't have to hunt. Like, it's like, I, it, it's like, it's already there. And it's oh, like, that sounds so great though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm tired of my function. I'm just saying that it's just to hear somebody else's different perspective on it. They don't, they don't have to do any of that. I'm like, wow, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, really? Like you don't have to hunt for it. It's not, no, because, like, when I have that one I, cool idea to launch off of, I'll, I'll go off of that for indefinitely until it's finished. So I'll keep, ex like, I'll keep lay layering and layering and layering the idea. I don't need to look outside because I'm just expanding on this one train of thought to its fullness, oh, to, wow. to it, flush it out completely. But, like, that, that's why I don't hunt, because I'm already, like, I have this one idea that I like to build. <laughs> so cool by the way i mentioned that i had two secrets and i forgot what the second one is so if i remember <laughs> it i'll probably bring it up but yeah to the viewers out there <laughs> yeah just name this episode nate's secrets for more uh, i've been trying to be as honest as i can like about everything i do now because i mean i used to be a dark enfp <laughs> like, a dark Ooh. a dark enfp um i mean i say dark because let's put it this way like, i've done my fair share of bad behaviors as one I feel like as an ENFP, we all have to learn eventually to like stop. I don't know. We, 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 there's things that we, that are very um, easy for us to do. I like to think of that, but then because, you know, we don't, let's hope not to capitalize on those things we find easy and then like actually work on some stuff. Cause we could get away with 
a lot of things, I could say. Because um, especially in the type community, sometimes they just see us as whimsical. So just capitalize on it. You know, like my ETE kicks in and goes like, okay, well, if you think I'm dumb, hmm, yeah, like I'll just do that, right? And I'll do something about it because I can operate off of the assumption that these people have onto me. But then at the same time, it's also not correct or ethical either. It could be wrong. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, nowadays, I'm just, you know, let's just focus on radical honesty and just be real. And then if people don't like it, we'll just have to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, that that goes back to the, the idea I was talking about, Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how like, ENFPs have a different one. I feel mm-hmm. like my theory is that when ENFPs don't get their extroverted intuition met, like, or like anyone's dominant function is like their most basic layer of Maslow. But like when ENFPs mm-hmm. don't get their NE met, what happens is it manifests in dark behaviors because it's mm-hmm. like, it, if I can't get this met, it starts to, your, your psych will find ways to try to get it met. Oh, I love that. That's why you brought up Maslow. I love, I love it. I love this kind of pyramid. Wait, do you think that all types have their own specific pyramid almost in a way? They might, yeah, yeah. That could be something we could definitely expand on for something else. Like, I would love to go into that. Like, if everybody has their own specific pyramid of growth. And maybe that, maybe that already exists. I haven't read much into it, actually. I don't think. At least, personally, I would love to read more about it. Um, I, my experience with Maslow is, one, I've only read about him in high school. But also, the, the expansion from his student or his successor in a way Claire Graves the one who did the whole Graves theory and then um, the next person after them who did spiral dynamics so I'm kind of familiar with vertical typology systems by that kind mm-hmm. of angle um, but yeah I know MBTI or cognitive functions or young and lacks a structure like that it lacks a vertical structure it's everyone supposedly equal <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> as if <laughs> um, not saying that I am I actually think that uh, people are useful in different ways. It's just that I find that the argument that everybody's equal may be counterintuitive, I think. Because, like, I don't know, like, some folks might think of, like, it's, like, I'm worried that it might be an ego thing, and I don't want it to be an ego thing. No, I, I think you're right. It's like everyone isn't, like, equal in the sense that you cannot give a cookie cutter solution to everyone. Yes, like, there if, you go. If, if equal were like this world were an ISTJ world and you're an ENFP and you're told to be equal and then they're like, oh, now you need to do things in this routinized way every day because that's equal. And then ENFP will slowly descend into insanity. <laughs> to um, madness. <laughs> yeah, so in a sense, equal is not like everyone would not function well at like the, given the same treatment. But we are all equal in the sense that we all have inherent value. So like, you are yeah. valuable and I'm valuable, but it's all about like, there are different ways to, you know, your, your TE uses the word capitalize. There's different ways to capitalize on the innate value of different people. Mm-hmm. Say that mm-hmm. it's all equal is to take away some of that value in people that, and to let it go hidden when you could actually bring it out. Yeah. I, I personally like to use it as, or at least how I view the the horizontal system, such as Jungian systems, that everybody has an equal chance of reaching success in yeah. their own way, because we're all given the tools, right? We yeah. have to work with the cards that we're dealt with. And for me, there was a lot, there was a period of like self-loathing and self-deprecation that was because feeling that my any wasn't useful enough in society, because in a way, I am the antithesis of efficiency with my any. Because I'm always just seeking out distractions, seeking out all kinds of different things, even as a creative powerhouse, right? But at the same time, you know, we have to take that into our own advantage because in a way I could sit here and complain about it or I could, you know, do something about that. I could make something out of my life, even if I'm just say just an any dog, right? Like I could do something about it. And of course there are people, you know, we have examples of folks who've made careers and successes out of, you know, being the way they are, even if people, even if the typical structure of society tells us that that's not a success story, or that's not the pathway to assured success, but we've, you know, they paved their own way. And I think it's like a big part of, I guess, our growth as per different archetype that we all, you know, it could be kind of fun. Um, 
Yeah, because I feel like, like especially when you're using the ISTJ example, if the whole world were ISTJs, no hate on ISTJs. My dad's one. Okay, <laughs> like I love no shade. Her. Yeah, no tea, no shade. My my dad is one, so I love him to death. But um, my point, like what you said about how if the world were all of that, um, they have a specific path to success, and that's fine. It, it's just not for me, and like I would fail where they would succeed. Yes, and that's kind of unfortunate, um, but it's also the reality. Because yeah. I'm not going to be able to complain about it and be like, oh, yeah, well, I can't do what you do. And that's the thing. I can't do what you do. Yeah. Like, and it also causes you unnecessary torture in your life. Oh. Like, unnecessary mental strain. Unnecessary. Um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sis, we've been there. I, my parents are SI dogs. The amount of oh trying to, like, abuse. Not with abuse. Sorry. That's probably the wrong word. The amount of standards and behavioral conditioning that I had to go through. <laughs> to be like <laughs> you know si dog <laughs> plus asian parent like that asian all already has like an si ingrainedness we so have what like five SI. specific careers as an asian it's what like you have a nurse you have um an engineer a doctor an architect oh and if you can't do any of those things be a mailman <laughs> like, <laughs> be, like a, take a government job and then like you'll be fine and i was like oh that's great i guess like stability sounds nice you know in enneagram mentality i wouldn't mind some consistency and some stability but it like <laughs> you get it you're seeing an, an, an inferior si visceral reaction <laughs> to to the expectation of an si expectation conditioning on me like eh, no <laughs> no i can't <laughs> um but yeah like it's whoo it's a thing i as a little side note, like Crystal and I are going to make an episode where we'll talk about like the conditioning of the Asian culture on Jungian folks, especially. That is so cool. Like we're definitely. I'm Asian. I've experienced that. Yes. (laughs) Because, okay, I will throw this back to you in a way. Um, This is me talking about it as an NE dog. I can only imagine the frustration it would be for an NI dog, right? Like going through someone to putting in the majority conditioning and you as an anti dom struggling to like break that because it's not even your axis, right? Like you see it, you you can't you get it, but you're kind of like, but I see beyond it. So why are we here? You know, <laughs> like why am I being? Why do I have to do this when I could do? I could definitely do more, right? Like I can only just imagine how an anti dom could feel or an anti user would feel. Yeah, it's almost like it, it, it pings off. Like it'll go like ping. <laughs> SI just going, yeah what is that <laughs> like, if it doesn't if it doesn't match my structure like my ni structure i'm like well it doesn't make sense to me like this isn't like it, it doesn't further the trajectory i want to go in and I, I don't see it as a healthy idea you know i mentioned this idea about ni being like it sees if something is a seed or a weed if it's like fast food or if it's nourishment and it's oh. like, well, if this isn't, if, if this isn't nourishing, then I'm just going to ping it off. Like, I'm not going to let it enter me. Um, and that's how I see it as like an NI. That's maybe. funny because I have that with FI. That's kind of <laughs> how I, I differentiate people sometimes is I, and I know it's probably going to be a whole other, like a whole nother tangent with that, but it's like the only way I can ever compare it to, even though it pales in comparison to what you're describing. It's just that as an ENFP, like it's the only thing I could probably connect it to um, because I don't know how to convert, I converge ideas that good or that skillfully as NI does, or it's probably not even skill for you. It's a talent, like it's just, you're born with it. But like to me, it would take work. So the only way I could ever do is like my second function is the one that I play with, that cursed with, <laughs> another cursed with, <laughs> to like, excuse me, but just to, to deal with and stuff would have to be FI, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. Can you yeah. expand on that? Like, how, how does your FI relate to it? Like, how does it parallel? Um, because in a way, it's... Because FI, to me, how I understood it, is applying value to things. Well, things in this context would be people. Um, and prioritizing... I like. I know how FI people like to say, like, prioritizing the self or prioritizing all that good stuff. Um, yeah, sure, fine. Like, well, I'll say it, but I don't really relate or resonate necessarily with that. I like to see it as being able to value the humanity as an individual and then multiplying that 
via the person, like the persons that I meet. So it's always like a different person, different kind of understanding of each person as everybody is unique in that sense. Um, so in a way, the whole trajectory concept of it converging and all that stuff, I do that with feelings. Like everything, like while Effie, I feel, could kind of branch out and have words for all these emotions, I don't do that. To me, it's, I feel like a lot of TJs could even relate to this. It's frustrating to see all these different words for feelings, whereas it really just boils down to like a five, maybe. And that's kind of like how we are as FI users. We kind of, we boil it down uh, to, to a primal urge. And it's, in a way, it's what makes us very difficult to express it because it's just like let's let's say we're just angry <laughs> like it's really there's no actual other word for it it's just like no we're just angry or no i'm just happy or i'm upset uh, even sometimes we like to use the word upset or frustration to differentiate but that's as far as we'll go we won't go that far um i feel like effie has so colorful words like you guys have like a scope of, <laughs> of terminology to play with and I, I don't have that that kind of mentality yeah very, yeah right like i see a person i'm like no you're just mad like, I'll just, I don't know, like, I, or I'm like, no, I'm just mad, or like, I'm just this. And it's just, I don't see it as that multifaceted, in a way. So, FI is kind of like languageless, in a sense. Yes, and there's so many cases of FI users always, and I've seen all the time in, like, Facebook groups where they always like, well, I don't know how to express my feelings, even though technically we should be <laughs> expressing more. But in a way, we're also our own trap like what is it that quote like the architect of our own jail kind of thing in a way because of how we are we kind of can't help ourselves but put ourselves in that situation because of how our fi tends to project inwards and yeah. then we start to think that other people have the same feelings as us because we just dilute or what is it what's the it's, i keep saying the word dilute it's the opposite of dilute it's um distill we're always distilling emotions and feelings into just the basic and forget that that's not really how the world works, but you know, we kind of can't help it. <laughs> that is, that's really interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, you know, heart of Michi. So Michelle Wilson, she mm -hmm. calls like, um, love her by the way. Yeah, She's amazing. Go check her out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. Come on, Michelle, if you're listening. Yes. <laughs> With, um, she calls FE and TE self evident. So like Ooh. as, um, as an extroverted feeler, like mm -hmm. I, I see emotions as self-evident. And it's like, whereas like for you as an introverted feeler, you see it as like nuanced and it, it's, it's multifaceted. Like you have more of a complicated understanding or there's more behind, like you are the depth of the iceberg. And mine is like, it's like, well, self-evident, you know, like. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting, like when you say that, because I actually see Effie, especially when handling co like let's say conflicts or when handling disagreements or handling that. Effie's very contextual in that aspect. Um, yeah. You guys are very good at treating everything as a contextual basis. That like let's say, oh, this person is pissed because of TI reasoning why they're pissed like this, or they disagreed with me because of this, and therefore you guys can remain like bonds with somebody because you guys can disagree on certain things, but as long as the FE is fine, you guys are okay. Like, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's totally opposite for us as, I guess, FITE, because in a way, we, if we already have a feeling about you, that's not going to change. However, we can get along on the basis that we can just get the job done. And then once you're done, I want you out of my life. You know, it's very, like, I don't want, like, I don't need you kind of gig. Um, because of that FI against that I have a per against a person. It, there is no reasoning. I personally don't even feel that there is even a TI way to explain it. Um, only that even if I try to explain FI, it often comes out in TE terms, where it's very, oh, this person has done this. It's always in the real world. Like, this is like things that lead up to my FI. And it's just, it's not the same. I would say we're not even as finesse as um, FE and TI. Which is why it kind of this, I would say that's kind of gives birth to a lot of difficulties with FI users being able to express themselves properly because of how, the, how lack of finesse we have. We're just like, oh, well, yeah, we'll just cover it with a mask of TE and then go about our daily business instead. Like, if we'd rather just do that than sit and unpack our feelings. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so much work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. I liked how you said like FE is context. And I think like context has a lot to do with like looking at reality. Because when you look at reality, you, you have more context of reality. And what happens yes. is that FE has more context with the long term reality, more context with that. Like it, it's trying to get like all like the the surrounding context so it can make like the best emotional decision. Yeah, I, I love that. Actually. Yeah. It's so great. I just for FI, we don't, we just, we don't look at it. We don't look at it that. Ugh, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> um, no, no, we don't look at it that way because for us, the emotion is carried on from the previous. So it, there's always like a line. There's a, a side of us that actually kind of holds grudges. You know, if in in FE terms, we could be the ones that hold grudges because we keep those emotions with us. Like I've had memories tied to my feelings uh, from way back, and I bring it out when I do. Because those, that's my version of context, you know, like your past flavors. And I know this could be an SI connection. It, could, it may be different for, you know, the FISE people. Um, but in a way, we, at least with how I operate, it's like if I have a feeling against you, it's, there's a reason why. I just don't know the reason. I just have this feeling where I'm like, oh, I, just, I don't want to be around you. Like it feels unsafe. And I feel a lot of FI users... It's, it's more prominent for us higher FI to express that we feel unsafe than it is for lower FI, I think, because there's a lot of lower FI, like TJs, for example, would just leave. You know, they'll just argue it and they'll just show you TE and then they'll go with from that kind of angle. But then for FI, we actually feel like it's a paranoia. I think there's a paranoia associated with us. It's, I don't know where it's coming from, how it's coming from, but it's there. <laughs> we're always, we have to like protect the little warm little fire that is FI. <laughs> and we're just like, what's wrong with us? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stunned by your any you know, uh, like, like when we started off talking about any and now we're talking about like whatever. Oh yeah, that's right. Whoops, because we're supposed to talk about any. Oh, just I'm went sorry. On a tangent, oh like, yeah. A <laughs> okay, this is another trait about any users is that like they start like multiple like topics like they oh my have goodness. To i'm so sorry i totally <laughs> forgot we were talking about any like that is 100 percent true oh my goodness okay <laughs> don't mind me i don't feel bad about going back to original topic it's totally fine <laughs> oh but you're right like you you raised such an important like 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 there's this meme that i really like about enfps that says that enfps get a lot done when they're supposed to be doing something else yeah like we were supposed to be talking about any but we talked about FI and I still, like, it was still fruitful, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's still productive. This one I know, Jay was like, this is why I like talking to you because it's productive. I'm like, I don't know if it's productive for me because I'm not doing what I need to be doing. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm well, glad you enjoy it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Wait, so, okay. We have yeah, to yeah, wait, have wait. Back. I just wanted to finish that point about FI that you had. So we talked about how, like, FI is convergent and NI is yes. convergent and that's something they share and I realized that they're they're kind of selective with what they they kind of let in there's like there we go yes they, thank you so, for taking that. yeah and that's <laughs> what they have in so, similarity because like NI is like NI vision NI trajectory and like there are certain things that fit in my NI pattern and certain things that don't um whereas gotcha. FI like it knows it on a different level like yes Yes. But I, can you describe more of that? <laughs> um, wait, sorry, say that again. I was I was all co occupied with what you were just saying previously. So, in, in what ways is FI selective about its what it oh, emotional? Gosh, yeah, there we go. For an emotional reason, we are selective because we distill, like we kind of throw out what doesn't matter to us. And matter is kind of a weird thing for FETI because it's like, how do you know what's deserving or what's not, right? But for us in FI, we, we judge everything by that kind of priority, kind of a structure, or that kind of structure, um, even if it seems very alien. So in a way, we will make decisions based off of arbitrary details that we ourselves have created um, in our minds that kind of flavor a lot of what we do. I think people like to think of us in the result-wise, like how they see us on the outside, they see us as like pursuing our passions or you know, doing all that kind of stuff. But then when it comes to like deciding people, for example, like I personally, I don't know, maybe I differ 
from other FI users. And I feel like to say that a lot because it's like, for some reason, everybody, every FI user, we have this problem where we can't talk for all of us. We have to talk from a perspective of the self first. We can't do it. We, we can't, we don't know what that's like because I don't know what another FI experience is. Even if I can pretend I can idealize it, I can't. So, um, yeah, so in a way, like we all have our own unique way of getting to some place. And then back to that whole thing about why we converge feelings instead, because, oh gosh, it's a struggle to not do that. <laughs> the pain, the pain of this statement, of that question. <laughs> Did I answer it properly? I'm trying to like think if I'm, I'm like, because I'm operating from like, like it's it's so in inward oriented and i have such a hard time bringing that out but i'm like did it, did it get somewhere could you did you gather anything with your ni from that from what i just said yeah so like fi sees everyone as having their own fi um and but like as an fe user i don't see it that way like i see it as you put your emotional you put it, your emotional cards on the table and then we can all work with that together in an interdependent way and create the best outcomes. So I see emotions as best used when they're like, I see them as it like self-evident because they're more of a actionable thing, but it's not like you, you see FI as more of a cognitive or like experience for the, for a person to have, or like for a self to have, but I see it more in terms of action. I see it more like, um, how, how do I use this emotional spectrum of information to to create self-evident outcomes? Yeah, because let's say your NI can sit there and look at all the intuition of the world, right? Zooming out. I, as an FI user, will sit and feel all the emotions, but I will never let it out. Like, I will never express it. So I'm just, like, sitting there. Like, I remember, we, I don't know if I've talked, I think I've talked to this with you, where I've brought up, like when I say how, when I feel an emotion as an FI user, I feel it as the exact same intensity as it was when I first experienced it. It doesn't fade out or it doesn't like go through this thing because I like sit there and I replay it and, or maybe not even replay it. It's just, it's just there. Like I take it as a snapshot or I take it as a, you know, and I lock it in a little cage, but it's the exact same um, energy as it was when it first entered that cage kind of thing so when you open it it's like you've experienced all these feelings again so if you look like we're mess when sometimes when we let out our fi because we're feeling it just as we're telling it to you at the same time so it's why we don't like we don't that's probably why we, we probably keep it and we don't always say it to people we'll just sit there and we'll just feel it ourselves I'll, I'll go like i'll have days where i'll just go home into my room turn off the lights and just cry not because i'm sad it's because i just wanted to feel <laughs> that's really interesting i just want to feel and then like after that i'm like nope we're done like we're okay and then i'll like lock it in and then put it back in a little drawer my mental drawer there and then just go do my own thing again yeah <laughs> okay uh that's foreign territory for me like when i when i recall something it doesn't evoke the same thing that i felt at the time unless unless it's connected to an ni pattern it's like, there this is go. the p pattern of my life and it's like this. Then it I will feel like that's how you're going to be able to understand my FI is with your NI to be able to see like the, the intensity that I'm describing from. Because I, mine comes off as if it has literally no connection. It's like there's almost literally no thread to reality why I even bother feeling it. But that's, I guess, how it is as an FI user. But for, I guess, the best way you could describe it as an INFJ is, you know, connect the dots with the NI and see that, that's how we kind of take it. You know, it's, it's an all internal processing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess like for NI, it can have like um, emotion, but it's, it's like where it comes from is it's like everything is interconnected and I'm feeling the weight of how this is all interconnected. And I may not, like it may take me time to explain to you because I have to flesh out that entire convergent process to you for you to understand. But it's like, I can get like, I can feel emotion from that too. I can go like this grand NI pattern. I'm, I may I may not even know that I'm, I'm addressing that pattern, but it always relates back to the interconnectedness of everything. And that's what I'm reacting to as well as the event itself. 
Yeah, I've always told um, folks, if you ever want to hear an FI user's FI, do you have a day, a week to unpack that? <laughs> because you're going to be unpacking all the feelings that we've experienced at its most intensity. So it's, it isn't something that you don't just take in, oh, I'm just going to hear you. Like, you know how FE goes, it's like, oh, let's tell me how you feel. I'm like, are you sure about that? Because we're going to go, <laughs> it's going to go hard. <laughs> and sometimes, they're, you know, I, I've noticed like with Effie, they're almost always not unprepared. Like, they'll just say, hi, how are you? And then the FI user will send them a paragraph. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we're intensity. Cool. Yeah. And I feel as an FI user, like, let's, we have to read the room a little bit better. Because sometimes it, it's not the FE person's fault. I mean, it's just how they are. But also, it's, we shouldn't be putting that burden onto others, especially if they haven't invested time to give us that. Because it can be so rewarding to talk to an FE user and I express FI and they take it and they like distill it and it works. And it's like amazing. You know, I've had a lot of relationships have been fixed because of me learning from FE. Because in a way, um, we're looking for a way to be so vulnerable with another person to just express all of that deliciousness. But that inner world we have, it's dangerous in a way if we wanted to share all of our thoughts because it's all feelings from the, since we were born till now in each of its own little box and each of those box have all its own intensity. It's not something that we just, Hey, you know, have a piece. There is no peace. You have to have the whole thing. <laughs> like, you have to eat the whole thing. So be overwhelmed. Like that's kind of. <laughs> that's such a good way of putting it. That's like a foreign world to me. Cause it's like, I've, I have FI users messaging me and they'll, they'll, they'll not only give me like a portion of their intense emotion, they'll, they'll give it the whole thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I feel for these people because I, I get it. Like I get where they're coming from because I do the same thing. Um, I have to be careful. I, I guess to, I don't know, because we're trying to go back to any, I know, but I guess in a way, is it helping like to get to that point between NI like converging and how FI kind of converges a little bit? Yeah, like, and I getting... felt like this chat was just very representative of any because <laughs> this is the only interview so far that I've allowed a tangent. <laughs> like for the other Thank one. you, actually, I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> for the other ones, we were just like on point. Like yeah. all the topics were related, but for this one, it was like slowly expands away from the topic. <laughs> like we're demonstrating the con the concepts that you talked about. You were yes. like, any goes farther away from whatever it was talking about, and then we exactly. did it. Exactly, we did it together. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, you had to go in for the ride. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta follow the end user to understand how it's like. <laughs> I uh, to really swing back to any. I actually like to argue that any is actually very predictable. I think I'd like to hold that. I, people kind of like to say, oh, and he's unpredictable, it's everywhere. I'm like, yes, that's if you didn't see the original SI point where we jumped off of, right? If you didn't see the context, then it looks like I have 99 Wikipedia articles open, like tabs, and you're just going to be confused of like, what the heck? But then there was a point that led to each one, you know? Like, it's all, it's all there. You just have to kind of scale back. Um, I've learned <laughs> that... We sh I should be a little bit better at, you know, not being super insane about it because in a way I could come off very, like I, I used to have what, like thousands upon thousands of tabs, not because I was interested in reading the article. It's just that I just wanted to know like a brief little gist of like one little thing. I literally had tried. I did a butter to King Lion Leonidas. Like I managed, I got there <laughs> like, on wiki. It's wiki is the most anything you've ever, ever have. Um, but it's just that that process of moving away, but it's not as unpredictable as it is. Because if yeah. you only click in the gist of each tab, yeah. you will get where we're coming from. I have That's a question. <laughs> How would you feel if I were to close your tabs in front of you? I don't mind. You don't, I don't mind? mind? I really don't mind at all. Um, because to me, I, I, I'm going to use the metaphor of my artwork, for example. If you burn all my artwork, I will not cry. Because in a way the artwork was merely the product, the real value is in here. I will always make more. So That's it's never true. really, it's, it's never a problem for me. Um, I don't know how I feel like, I don't know, maybe INFPs or INTPs might feel differently because they spend so much time with, you know, cultivating it with their internal processing. Yeah. And it not be any. But with me, that's not hard at all. Like I've learned to be not as like connected to physical objects like that. Because if I had... 
like I, I collect things, you know, I still do. Like I like collecting. It's an SI thing, right? Like I will have little bits and pieces of memories and stuff. But if my house burns, let's say, I'm gonna go out there, go out there with the strangest thing. If my house go burns down, I'm not gonna cry about it because in a way, it's another opportunity to see the new. It's another opportunity to try something else again. So I, as long, excuse me, as long, I think the most biggest fear for me, excuse, oh wow, I'm just burping from all this coffee. Um, the biggest problem for me, the biggest fear that I'm experiencing would have to be losing my mind and not being able to create anymore. That's the thing that's, I think that's, I'm most afraid of um, because everything else is replaceable in my mind, at least like how the objects I've created can be replaced. Like if I were to lose all my artwork, if I were to lose all the things, all the ideas I have on my computer or whatever, I don't know. Like I just, why would I cry about it? Because everything was in here anyway. So why did I have to worry? Like I could just bring it out again. You know, it was really all those Wikipedia articles, all those tabs only represented a thread. It's not a rug. It's not like a curtain of, or it's not a huge fabric. So if you cut it, that's okay. Right. Yeah. I think the, the most painful for me too would be the FI fabric, right? If you were to burn that whole FI bedspread I would have, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> then we'll get into a little bit more, ah, like, <laughs> yeah, actually, because that's someone that took longer to cultivate and kind uh, of, yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I asked that because um, I, I was with my ENFP one day and I saw that she had like 10,000 um, tabs open, right? So mm -hmm. I volunteered to close them for her. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, girl, you, you got to close some of these. And she's like, um, I don't like, she's not attached to them, but she was like, but what if I need that? And she's like, you know, like, I, like, like yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, exit, 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 exit. Like I, I was, I, I kept pressing the, Close, yeah, close. well, when you really close it, you, I don't know, as an any user, I just feel that the, the fear we had of the what if wasn't even there. Like, it, it doesn't exist. Like, it's fake. Like, it's a fake fear that we have that of the what if. Because the opposite of that, or the alternative, is to just keep making more anyway. So why should I feel bad that the tabs were closed, right? It's true. Because if you're going to tell me something, I'm already going to open another Wikipedia article already. And then that's yeah. already another one. So I can't, maybe I'm a, maybe because I'm a seven, like I can't just look back like that. Yeah. And feel that kind of longing for what's gone. Um, yeah. I don't have that feeling because in a way, why, why? I have to ask that question because I'm not looking behind, I'm looking forward. And if I'm yes. trying hard to not have any physical attachments and connections to things yes um yeah. why would i yeah bother, right that, yeah that's so cool yeah and i i totally agree i think my my friend it was a few different reasons for her case because some of her tabs mm -hmm. were were her christian tabs and it is connected to her fi in the sense that like if, uh, if she loses it she's not sure how to get back to that video and then like but okay like, yeah and but the thing is like she i think it's a like a fear of ending possibilities too soon it's like i'm like you're never going to finish this but she's like maybe i will and i'm like <clears throat> i relate like, to that a lot yeah. yeah she's just very like detached to to anything sensory in general yes, um, yes. it's just i i like making decisions for her but sometimes it's a little like i i force her to make decisions yeah too soon, and she's like what if i want to still like do that <laughs> like, i, I kind of want to add on to that what you said because that actually makes a lot of um to any NFPs who are driven or at least still affected by that kind of anxiety, anxious feeling of even you're not having enough, um, needs to accept the reality that it isn't ever going to be enough. But that's also a blessing in disguise because that's kind of our default as an NE dog. So I, I guess I approached it from such a philosophical conceptual angle because I've had conversations with other NE users where they'll be like, they'll acknowledge or be so focused on the 0.1 percent of the what if that they won't get anything done and i'm going at the end of the day it's just 0.1 percent why not focus your any on maybe the 30 percent or the 40 percent or you know or the 90 even like focus on that and then you can worry about your 0.1 <laughs> because yeah. at the end of the day i don't know it's just the the sooner you accept that everything is just a, you know, a byproduct of your creation, 
you don't have to worry about its destruction. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. knows how I'm going like, with this. But. <laughs> you're teaching me something, Nate, through our interaction that ENFPs can have a certain type of growth mindset and fixed mindset. So I think, I wonder if the, the, the functions have a different version of a growth mindset and fixed. Because what I realized from you, Nate, is that you have a growth mindset with any. You're like, it, it's abundance oriented. You're like, uh, if it's in my mind, I can create more. If everything is destroyed, I still have me and I can create more. That's a growth mindset. And it's specifically any because it's about like your any process. And I realized that there's also a fixed mindset way of having any, which is like when an any user is just not taking action because they're afraid of something. And then because oh. they can think of all the possibilities and then they're like, I don't know which to choose. Uh, I call that the paralysis. I think I was writing something a little bit about that. I called it the any paralysis. Yeah. Where they suddenly they're faced with infinity and they're stuck. They like, they can't move. And I've been there. We've all been like, you know, to any users listening, we've all been there. We've all been part of that situation. It's hit me too. Like we've all had it. Uh, But it's tough. You have to get out of that because if you can't move, then you are essentially useless. Like you put yourself in that trap. (laughs) That's not good. (laughs) It's, it's not good at all. I can, I'll, I can sympathize with the pain of the torture that we put ourselves in in a paralysis situation. It's 100% guaranteed burnout. <laughs> yeah, they call it the, any, any bottleneck. Ooh, yes. Yeah, that's Ooh. what they call it. <laughs> yeah, when you finally acknowledge that our body is really, really limiting. <laughs> like we actually can't pursue those possibilities because yeah. let's say we didn't do our exercise that day and then we can't actually yeah. go out and do the things we wanted to do. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. I guess like how I'd summarize um, what you were teaching me is that like the growth mindset of any is like bel- placing faith in the expansion of your ideas and just letting like knowing that as long as you have that, like good things will, will you can create them still. But like with the fixed mindset of any, it is more of the bottleneck syndrome. Ooh, that's a rough. Yeah. Yeah. I already kind of have a reaction to that. That's rough. I mean, to those who are suffering from the bottleneck, I guess, syndrome or symptom or whatever it is they're going through, I, I guess take it from a fellow NE dom, right? Like it's at the end of the day, you decide how many possibilities you have. I like to describe it as infinite bullets. You know you have it. You'll never get the right hit. Like let's say you'll never hit the target properly. Like of course that's never going to happen, especially with infinite bullets. But that's not a big deal because you have infinite bullets. Like, you can't stop. I mean, that's the concept of infinity that we have to, like, I, I don't know, to, to accept. If you have everything, like, you have all the ideas waiting to happen, why are you sad? Why are you stuck? That means you have everything then. That means you, I know people will be like, oh, I don't want to choose. But then if you choose, you get more. So keep choosing like make a stance, do something. You can always change it. Like it's not really, you know, you, it's, it's, and for the most part, I feel even any ENFPs kind of forget that it's still in the realm of any. So if your mind changes midway, why not? Because it's just all in your mind. Yet. You haven't really made anything yet. You're still stuck in that paralysis zone. You're not really moving. <laughs> so change your mind a little bit more. Keep going, open another door, do something else, and then get out there. Because I feel like as any doms, if we let ourselves trap ourselves with our own NE, that's not good for us. We won't get what we want. What we want is more NE. And for some reason, we feel like we need to, I feel like it's a conditioning thing. I feel like we are forced to box our NE in. And I'm I'm just saying that don't do that. Don't box it in, push it out, get it out there. And then, because I mean, more NE can come from even a conversation. Like so much NE I'm generating just from talking to you. I'm already like inspired and energetic and like ready to take on the world right? Like get out of our heads and get there to like talk to a person. I don't know. It's just something that I don't agree with the inspire inspirational ENFP archetype, but I sound very like I'm trying to inspire <laughs> other ENFPs. Like I personally, if I inspire you, great. But if you do, if you're art, then that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I just, I guess my FI feels for that because having been there myself, having been put in that situation, it's not, it's not a good, it's not a good place. Mm-hmm. That was that was a really motivational tone to end this off with, right? So, yeah, 
um, you know, Nate is this awesome, energetic uh, ENFP. He has a podcast that is linked below. He's going to make videos with Crystal. She's really cool, too, uh, on Asian conditioning and functions. Oh, yeah. Thank really you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have you on, by the way, for that. We could talk about that. As sure. Well. We can all talk yeah. about my trauma and your trauma together. Yes, we should. <laughs> we definitely, I feel we need more Asian NFs or NTs even, to come forward, because we know we've all been through, we've all been there, we all have some similar experiences, but also our own growth ways of how we got to where we are now, kind of thing, we really yeah. to unpack. That is so true, wow, in spirit, not, okay, no, I don't want to use the word, um, that was very a uh, cool name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so you, you saw, uh, you know, Nate's amazing thoughts today, uh, if you liked uh, the video, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel and Nate's channel. Uh, I'll link that below. And I hope you guys have an excellent day. Um, stay cool. Oh, and can I add to, like, yeah. Joyce, you're a very fascinating and awesome human being. Like, I don't care what other people think about that. Like, they, like, people who watch this need to follow your thoughts and your train of process because you have so much I, you know i actually didn't even realize that you had so much to unpack until megan told me she's like you know joyce is really smart and i'm going wait really i was like hold up i didn't see this and then like i dug in and i'm like girls got some ideas like it's it's great and like i feel like i fell into a labyrinth of awesomeness like talking to you and like getting to know you which i think is really really awesome i don't know i'm probably going to do this little compliment thing moment but people need to hear you so i'm just saying Oh, I feel so appreciated. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, you know, um, people yeah. need to follow this girl. She knows what she's talking about. So. Yeah, yeah, you need to follow this guy. He has, like, oh. some podcasts. Like, uh, Nate, uh, let me tell you a little story about how I got to know you. Um, oh, okay. when I When I found you uh, and I watched your videos, I thought that you were, like, so, such a good example of extroverted intuition. Because, like, like, I'm a very persnickety person, and I'm like, well, this video doesn't look like, like, I, normally, when I look up NPs, I, I, I'm distrustful of whether or not okay. they're NPs. Okay. But when I came across your videos, I felt like you represented the function so well. And I was really? like, yeah, because I was trying, <laughs> wow. I, I was searching for a correct representation of extroverted intuition, and I could never find it until I stumbled upon your videos. And, you know, Heidi Freebs as well. But, like, I, I really respected you for your like self awareness for your content, um, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe well, maybe this is the second secret that I had. We're literally just having fun. Like I honestly, we're just at least with me when I first started making any of those videos episodes when I started the podcast. It was just just to talk because I knew that I'm this personality. <laughs> like I just I'm like if I'm annoying, somebody's must be into it. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm annoying, somebody's into it. Someone's into it. Somebody, I am probably somebody's desire somewhere, and I don't know how that makes sense. It doesn't have to, but <laughs> there's a market for that probably. So here we are. <laughs> That's confidence. Wow. <laughs> that is actually confidence. Okay, anyone who's insecure in my audience right now, just learn from what, what Nate just said. Like, <laughs> The trick to confidence is not seeing yourself as like perfect. It's accepting that you might be annoying. There's at least one. But some people <laughs> might dig that annoyingness. Yeah, some people might like that you're imperfect and real. You know, I feel like we put so much pressure on trying to be perfect and trying to be your most on, right? But I feel like we're more attracted when we're not on. You know, like when the makeup is off, when the hat's off and the clothes, you know, when we're stripped down and raw is when people are like, I can relate, you know, like that kind of vibe. So in a way, I'm just kind of like, you know what, we're just going to have some fun and let's see if people like it because that's all I can offer. I don't offer anything else, I guess. <laughs> I only offer realness, as real as I could be. <laughs> that's, that's valuable in a world that feels like they have they have to be fake. Like you, you give them permission to be real when you are real. I hope so. If they can yeah. join me in the madness, like let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing is taboo to the any user. So if you want to throw something at me, I'll, I'll probably throw something back. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, yeah. that's lovely. Thanks, thank you so much for having me, Joyce. This has been like a fantastic conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love talking to you and you're just an amazing human being. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate anyone I bring on my show is probably a really cool person and oh gosh. you guys wow. should all look oh into God. them. <laughs> this is yeah. so much like FB going on. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. And remember, it. like, subscribe, look at Nate's podcast. Okay, bye guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh, gosh.